pedals are like candy to guitar players. They're irresistible and there's always room for one more. There's nothing better than heading down to your favorite music store and assembling a great pedal board. That's what I'm doing. If you want to tag along, then join me for this episode of I Don't Have a Band, right now. Hey guys, my name is Justin Waterfield. I have been with Long and McQuaid for about a year and a half now. I know a lot about electronics, about circuitry. I should start off by saying I checked out your channel, really dig it. I build my own pedals, I modify pedals, I modify amps. I love to find out what makes things tick. The idea for today uh, is to build the ultimate pedal board, or at least a really good pedal board. And I've learned the secret about the parking lot here at the Bloor Long McQuaid. Get here early, it's fabulous. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Dan, the self-proclaimed Lonely Rocker. I'm super excited about this episode because I've got the ultimate pedal board for you and I got the opportunity to collaborate once again with Long McQuaid. A couple of weeks ago, I was invited to the downtown Toronto location to meet with Justin, their resident pedal expert, to build a pedal board with any pedals available in store. And since Long McQuaid is Canada's largest musical instrument retailer, well, I had no shortage of pedals to choose from. The rules were pretty simple. The only thing that we discussed and agreed to ahead of time was that we wanted to make sure we included at least one pedal from every major category. From there, Justin was given free reign to make all of the picks. Once we had our selections, Justin shared his thoughts on the optimal pedal order. While the argument is there are no rules, there are some fundamentals to consider. So if you're looking to build a pedal board, or if you've got an existing board and you're looking to make some tweaks, I've got a lot of great information to share with you. And if you hang around until the end, I got to bring the pedal board back here to my studio. I recorded some tones I pulled together with the board. So stick around and I'll share those a bit later. There are no reviews or shootouts in this video. We're putting together the ultimate pedal board, or at least a really good one. Okay, let's head down to Long McQuaid. Hey, hey Justin. Man, how's it going? I'm doing all right, how you doing? I'm uh, doing all right for this early hour of the morning. Well, thanks for opening up the store so early. You know, I've never been into uh, Long McQuaid before uh, business hours. It's blissfully quiet. Uh, it's like Shangri-La <laughs> here. <laughs> okay, time to get started. I've sort of narrowed things down a little bit. Um, so we're gonna be um, basically sort of choosing um, like a pedal for each of the sort of main, I guess, categories. Um, that most people should have on their pedal board, uh, which is sort of like utility pedals, um, distortion or overdrive, modulation, uh, time-based effects, and uh, any envelope um, effects. So like wah, compressor, things like that. Right. So let's start at the beginning. Pretty much everybody's doing a tuner pedal these days. Um, I think that the best choice is probably get, still going to be the Boss Chromatic Tuner. Nobody beats it yet. The TU3, yeah. This is kind of the standard um, as far as tuning pedals go, so I mean, you really can't go wrong. Any specific updates with the TU3 that are notable or just, you know? The TU3, actually, they've revised the, uh, the LED array, so it's uh, quite a bit brighter than it used to be. I also had a TU2, and I found that if I was playing outdoors in the sun, uh, or on a bright stage, I found the meter readout up here a little bit hard to read, but they've revised that now, so it'll right. be good in any sort of situation. Yeah. Um, so that's going to be first in the chain right there. Great choice. I've had one for years. It's uh, nothing beats it. There's a commonly accepted order of uh, that you should put your uh, pedals in. And this just has to do with good signal routing and the signal flow. Anytime you're dealing with uh, anything that modifies the envelope of the guitar, so the attack, the decay, the sustain, things like that, you want that first in the chain. You want your guitar to see these pedals first. Well, apparently technology failed me for this next pedal. The clip I shot went to rock and roll heaven. But through some painstaking digital recreation work, I was able to recreate the essence of what Justin said. Blah, 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 blah. 
<laughs> well, apparently I suck at doing that. Sorry, Justin. Anyways, the Cry Baby Mini. That was his next choice. And what a great pedal it is. I've been a sucker for wah pedals for many, many years. I've owned my share. Um, you get the full wah effect in a, in a form factor that's about half the size of a regular wah pedal. Gives you room for another pedal on your board. Anyways, great choice. So here is where we're going to get into uh, a compressor. The one that I thought would be a great pick just in general, but specifically because we cover a lot of recording and mixing stuff, the Keeley compressor. This is their four knob compressor. You know, we're two for two because I've got a Keeley compressor oh, as well. Oh yeah, oh there we go. <laughs> great minds think alike, I guess. So this one is, is really, really nice compressor, very smooth, very transparent. You don't notice it uh, as much when it's on unless it's at extreme settings. Like this. This white knob, this is the key to the whole thing. This is a clean blend. Mm -hmm. You can just crush the hell out of your signal and blend back in your clean control. And there you go. Next, this may be a personal thing. I know a lot of people do this. This is sort of conventional wisdom. This is not hard and fast. This is not written in stone. I like to have overdrive and distortion next towards the front of the chain. The reason for this, generally speaking, you want your distorted tone going into things like modulation and especially time-based effects like uh, delays and reverbs. And the reason for this is you want to affect the distorted tone and not distort the effect itself. Now you can run modulation into um, a distortion and it sounds really cool like that. You sort of get a little bit more of a, a Hendrixy. Uh, you know, kind of 60s, 70s vibe where these guys were just running their pedals right into the front of like a distorted Marshall, for example. Um, so that's totally cool. There is no right or wrong as to where you place your distortion in your chain. It's totally up to you. But for me, I like it out in front and I like the modulation and the uh, time-based effects to affect the distorted sound. Distortion, overdrive, fuzz. A lot of people get confused about this. They are all variations on the same theme. Anything that is labeled distortion or overdrive or fuzz distorts your signal. It makes it all gnarly and fuzzy and sizzly and fun. This is another reason why we get into guitar pedals is for that loud distortion sound. We all love it. It's just, it's one of those things. The most popular one nowadays tends to be uh, from a company called Full Tone, which is out of California, called the OCD, the Obsessive Compulsive Drive. Another pedal I have. Everybody loves this one, but that is actually not what I've chosen. I've chosen something from Electro Harmonics. Okay. So we're gonna go over here, and it's this guy called the OD Glove. Oh, interesting. This is an awesome, awesome pedal. This is a clone of the Full Tone OCD. And the reason I chose this- so Modern one, pedal manufacturers are cloning each other. Now. Oh yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, it's hilarious. Well, I have an OCD, so <laughs> I will compare them. <laughs> The next thing that we should look at is modulation. Anything that modulates um, your signal, which is to say it can affect pitch, it can affect amplitude. So many different types of modulation. There's chorus, there's phaser, there's flanger, there's tremolo, all sorts of things. 
the one that I thought that gets overlooked that a lot of people really, really uh, end up enjoying when they're exposed to it is a variation on the phaser chorus theme, which is a Univibe pedal. Mm. So I am a huge Univibe snob. I am very picky about my Univibes. I like it to sound like Hendrix, um, like Machine Gun off a of Band of Gypsies. The Voodoo Labs micro vibe is as close as I've ever got. Honestly, set both dials at noon, and that is the Machine Gun sound. This is a really, really cool pedal. After modulation, now comes our time-based effects. That's delay and reverb, respectively. So I'm gonna do one of each for you. Um, for the delay pedal, I'm gonna choose something really special. This is one of the coolest pedals I've ever come across. And it is this, the Chase Bliss Tonal Recall. This thing is an absolute monster. Any of you viewers have dabbled in synthesizers, this line of pedals from Chase Bliss is really interesting. These knobs are not potentiometers as we know them in any other pedal. These are rotary encoders. So on any Dave Smith instruments, on any Korg instruments, synthesizers, I mean, um, basically there is a processor which reads the position of the knob and then relays that information into the analog circuit. So it's basically doing what a potentiometer does. But because this knob is not physically connected to the circuit, its value is being translated through a processor. What this gives you is the ability to save presets in an analog circuit. So it gives you digital flexibility while still having that warm, fuzzy analog goodness. We are in the world of the hybrids. Right? This, <laughs> oh man. can only imagine the circuitry inside of that thing. It's pretty nuts. I took a peek inside one of them. There's like, it looks like there's like two or three circuit boards stacked on top. It's, uh, it's bananas. This is absolutely analog BVD delay at its finest. This is really cool. Okay, the last stop on our pedal choosing journey is going to be Reverb. This is everybody's current favorite pedal. The 80s are coming back in a big way, so Reverb it is. This may be an obvious choice for some of you guys, but we're going to go with the Big Sky from Strymon. Ah, uh, sir. Yes, indeed. Everybody loves these, and for a good reason. Similar to what's going on with the Chase Bliss, you have uh, rotary encoders that remember their positions and translate that into the circuit. You can save presets. The only difference is Strymon is digital. It is all digital. It just has to be. That's the nature of the effect. And that's totally cool. Strymon Big Sky is definitely the best one on the market. So the way I've set this up, I have the tuner first, obviously, because um, you want it to get the cleanest signal from your guitar. I have that routed in here to the wah pedal. Um, from there, going to the compressor. Now these two, the wah and the compressor, these are our envelope modifiers. So we definitely want them to receive the cleanest signal from the guitar. I like to have overdrive and distortion next, right? Sort, sort of towards the front of the chain. So from here, we're going into the micro vibe, from the micro vibe into the delay, and the delay finally then into the reverb and the reverb out to the amp. The idea being that the repeats on the delay can also be um, spatialized by the reverb itself and sort of make it sound larger than life. If we had the reverb first in front of the delay, 
you would hear those trails sort of repeating into each other and it can get a little messy, but again, no hard and fast rules here. This is just generally speaking. I absolutely encourage anybody to play around with their effect pedal order. You're not gonna blow anything up. These are totally safe. Um, try them in different orders. Put your compressor last. Put your, uh, you know, your wah pedal after your um, delay pedal. It doesn't matter. Whatever sounds good to you is the way you should do it. Absolute last thing on the menu, Dan. I'm going to send you away with one of these units. Now, this is a Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 2 Plus. Again, industry standard as far as powering pedals. A lot of people do, I guess, the easiest thing, which is a uh, plug-in power adapter with the daisy chain. And that's totally fine if you have a few pedals. I always recommend getting a dedicated power supply because it does two things. Number one, you can mount it underneath your board uh, and it can really, you know, you can use zip ties and really sort of route the wiring the way that it's cleanest. It makes for much cleaner setup and makes for much easier troubleshooting should you run into problems. But the other thing too is that when you're using a daisy chain, the danger in that is that if you have any noisy pedals, if you have any vintage pedals, any fuzzes, um, anything with a lot of high gain, what tends to happen is the noise generated by that pedal tends to bleed onto the power line, onto the daisy chain, and feed through down the line to the other pedals. Um, some tuner pedals have clock noise, so you can hear the ticking of the clock further down the chain. Um, so just to avoid problems like that, I'm giving you one of these. All right, Dan, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna pack this up, uh, give you the pedal power and get you the bag, get you the counter and uh, send you on your way. And I'm really curious to see what you do with this guy. That was a ton of fun. I own variations of three of Justin's picks, so that made me feel kind of smart, but he did throw me a couple of curveballs. Pedal order always starts a discussion. If you're more experienced, then you can be more comfortable veering from tried and true. However, if you're newer to building pedal boards, then starting with Justin's recommended order is a great place to start. Remember, you can easily move them around once you get more familiar with what they do. And that's really the fun of it all. Experiment until you find the sound you're looking for, and then change it up again. So I spent a little time with a pedal board and came up with some combinations that I really liked, and then I tracked them here in my studio. Let's check them out. Well, there you have it, our ultimate pedal board. I had a blast. I wanna thank Long McQuaid once again for making this all happen, and especially to Justin for his time and incredible insight into the world of pedals. 
I certainly learned a lot and I hope you did too. For more information about today's featured products or any of your musical instrument needs, please visit long mcquadecom As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to stay up to date. Remember, you don't need a band to rock and roll. There are a lot of great musical projects you could do by yourself right from your own home. I hope to see you again next time. Yeah.